Okay, let's start off with our question and answer portion. So the first question goes to Dr. Bambo. Uh, I think you should ex expound more on who should be given the warm compress versus the cold compress. For each compress, uh, we need to identify first what is the inciting agent or the infusate. So uh, if our goal is to vasoconstrict or to localize or to reduce the inflammation, then uh, we need to apply uh, cold compresses. Um, example of which are hyper or smaller uh, agents like TPN or calcium and potassium salts and also the DNA binding agents, the chemotherapeutic drugs I've mentioned. Those are the drugs that we need to um, basically constrict and localize the agent. And then if our goal is to uh, vasodilate and easily disperse the disperse the agent, then we apply uh, warm compresses, especially for vasoconstrictors, vasopressors, which can cause ischemia, and also for the DNA uh, binding chemotherapeutic drugs I've mentioned earlier. Okay, so when would we go for surgical fasciotomy? Usually, uh, compartment uh, syndrome is common also in uh, children since I've mentioned that their subcutaneous tissue is flexible and distensible. So they are prone to that. Uh, uh, and the most common uh, sign yung 5 P's natin before, uh, usually 5 P's per compartment syndrome is yung pain, pallor, paresthesia, paralysis. Uh, uh, usually th those signs should be present. And uh, if that uh, signs are present, then th there is a uh, compartment syndrome. Uh, although it was, it, it was also mentioned in one study that it could be a late sign of compartment syndrome. And for children, mostly, the first sign could be just pain that is disproportionate to the insight, uh, to the injury. So if the pain is um, uh, disproportionate to the injury, we should consider uh, referring or considering uh, compartment syndrome. But also, if there would be uh, surgeons that can assess the patient, then we should also refer. And if uh, there is the presence of mga transducer, intracompartmental catheter that could measure the pressure uh, in the area of um, injury, then uh, we should do that. And uh, if the measurement is more than 20 millimeter mercury above the diastolic pressure or uh, more than 30 millimeter mercury above our mean arterial pressure, then that's considered compartment syndrome. Uh, hence, uh, pasiotomy is indicated. Thank you, Dr. Bambo. Um, for Dr. Evangelista, could you kindly expound more on uh, what permissive hypotension means? And when you say permissive hypotension, it's like a controlled resuscitation. So it means that you judiciously um, do your fluid resuscitation in such a way that you target um, the minimum systolic blood pressure or even suboptimal blood pressure while waiting for a definitive um, ther therapy, like um, surgical intervention or um, embolization um, in uh, hemorrhagic shock. Or sometimes we use it also in PQ if there's like um, uncontrolled or very severe um, hypotensive or um, refractory shock, I mean. Um, the concept here is that you limit the fluids so as not to um, give your patients uh, too much because excessive fluid might cause um, coagulation, uh, disruption of uh, the clots. Secondly, it may also cause um, dilutional coagulopathy. Um, in children, it may cause um, hypothermia. Also, um, it may cause excessive fluid and fluid overload that can cause release of cytokines and damage um, organ systems, just like what we see in abdominal compartment syndrome, um, yung mga, um, intraocular compartment syndrome, etc. So um, basically, in children, uh, we do it very... Um, uh, what do you call it? Um, it's monitored very um, in a controlled environment. 
So um, it's not actually done left and right, no? just like what I've mentioned in my lecture, um, because there are caveats. Like in traumatic brain injury, severe traumatic brain injury, of course, you don't do permissive hypotension because you have to maintain a certain um, cerebral perfusion pressure. So um, like in children, there it's approximately like 50 millimeters mercury as compared to a thoracic hemorrhagic shock wherein you do, you may do per, uh, permissive hypotension because it's here that you control the dissolution of clots, the dilutional coagulopathy, etc. So the thing is, if you do that, you have to be with somebody who's knowledgeable um, of the idea, like an intensivist or a surgical critical care specialist. So that depends on uh, the case itself, right? Yes. And maybe the other parameters like the heart rate can we can't let it increase too much with my own parameters. No? Yes. moves in real time. So should our healthcare technology. With information needed, decisions to make, and experience to share. Every second counts. Live integrated tele-ultrasound enables real-time communication, remote collaboration, confidence, knowledge, and learning. The first ever integrated tele-ultrasound collaborative platform. Philips Lumify. Integrated Tele Ultrasound, powered by React's collaborative platform. Innovation and you, Philips. For Dr. Karen Bambo, is there data on the use of nitroglycerin patch? Mm. Oh, is that a lot? Uh, yeah, we, we actually use that a lot, sir. Um, in our patients in pediatric ICU, 
Although I actually research for, for um, mga studies and researches nga dyan, and but I only came across a uh, topical nitroglycerin so far. Uh, topical nitroglycerin of approximately uh, 2%. Usually yung nakikita ko. Although I'm not really sure if it's actually available here. And it's almost the same effect as uh, parang pentolamine for patients with uh, vasopressor injuries. So yung mga nag-schemia. I think um, wala lang ako nakakita ng data or researches, but I think it will work the same. So for localized injury. And we've used it and we've seen it's, it's been effects. effective, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> in some. <laughs> uh, uh, in some nga. Uh, yeah. Sige. Earlier, Dr. Bambo, you showed us a slide wherein manual extraction was being done mm-hmm. in maraming puncture sites. Mm-hmm. Kanya. Who is allowed to do that? Is it the nurse or the doctor or should we call in our plastic surgeon? Actually, um, since it's probably new practice here, no, or some lang yung practice here in the Philippines, but abroad actually they do it. Even yung mga nursing uh, practitioner, mga ganun, yung mga advanced nurse or ano, they have um, skills for that. Maybe we can train both nurses and doctors to do that kasi hindi naman siya talaga parang IND lang ang ang ginagawa sa kanya so if a flush mo lang din parang insertion lang din so i i, I wouldn't mind kung skilled naman or trained naman yung nurses uh, they can also do that for Dr. Evangelista we have a question here fluid creep is quantitatively the most relevant fluid in the PQ what future research efforts the healthcare providers have to reduce the inadvertent water and electrolyte burden and improve the quality of care of critically ill children? Alam mo, I tried to search on researches in children, but unfortunately, I haven't found any. Um, but in adults, marami silang research in terms of permissive hypotension. So they actually test the different um, systolic blood pressure that's allowable for a certain condition. Yun nga, like in um, traumatic brain injury, parang they allow 90 to 95. In non-traumatic brain injury cases, um, they have researches that say na 80 to 90 is permissive. Um, some would actually say that 60 versus 70 and 60 is better you know, because um, it's more um, the, the fluid, uh, the introduction of um, resuscitation is more controlled and the fluid overload is less.